I'm ready. Anticipation. Anticipation. Okay, cool. We are live. Uh, welcome to On Set on this beautiful Thursday in New York City. I am Daniel Norton. This is Dave. We have Brent here, rocking it. Seth's over there on the mix. And uh, today, what are we doing today? Umbrellas. Today we're going to talk about umbrellas. Uh, Glow, which is uh, the house brand here, uh, said, Daniel, we have all these new umbrellas. Will you do something with them? And I was like, sure. So here we are. I like to do this uh, probably a couple times a year. I do something on umbrellas. I love umbrellas. Um, when I first started in photography, I, I used umbrellas almost always. Partially because everybody was using soft boxes and I wanted to just be different, and partially because they're cheap, right? And I was just starting. And so they're a good tool for that. We're going to talk about the different types of umbrellas because there's a lot. People will sometimes think umbrella, okay, it's the one that came with my kid or whatever. There's a lot of different sizes. They're not very expensive. Uh, so you can get a variety of them. We can get a bunch of different looks with them. And we'll talk about a little bit about how to use them just in general. And I will, I'm saying it, so it has to happen. I will shoot a full length picture. I know, I know. Yeah, umbrellas. Yes, because every single time I do a demo, people are like, can you shoot one full length? It's like, beauty photography, can you shoot one full length? No, I can't. Umbrellas, we will shoot full length for sure. Not every shot, but we'll shoot some. Uh, I will try to say all the equipment I'm using as I go. If I don't ask, I will tell you. We got the Canon uh, 1DX Mark II with the 24 to 70. We're going to use Profoto lighting, uh, B1Xs, and uh, all the glow umbrellas that you could possibly think of. So, I don't know. Let's just start with the big one. Should we start big? Why not, right? Let's go with the big one. So this is a... Okay. Oh, also, I guess these umbrellas are easy to open. Easy, easy, no, easy lock. Oh, they lock or something easily. So yeah, if, you, if you've had trouble with umbrellas in the past, these were, are better. That, 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 that's what I'm supposed to say. I don't really understand. But there is a different mechanism inside. See, there's like a little button inside. Yeah, there's like a little button inside. Rather than the little blade. Let's, 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 let's huddle in. Right, right here, there's a little button for closing it. So if somehow you had a problem opening and closing umbrellas before, you will not have that problem. Um, okay, so this one is a biggie, 65 <laughs> inches. It is translucent, right? What's great about a translucent umbrella is that it's a large, uh, basically, piece of diffusion, right? This is gonna allow the light to, to break up and be nice and soft, because it's large. It's also gonna be diffuse, right? Which will help if somebody is shiny. I'm gonna try and not poke you with it. Uh, generally, with this kind of umbrella, actually, this is all right. Get smart. Cone of silence. Come on. All right. So uh, I had to get that out of the way. Uh, you want to shoot through this umbrella. Translucent umbrellas are also often called shoot-through umbrellas, meaning that you put the diffusive side generally towards the subject. Of course, if I was to use it this way, light would still bounce back. I would just lose a lot of light, right? Because it would some of it would go through. So, anyways, we're going to point it at the subject. Subject being Brent in this case. Dave's gonna put it on the light. It just slides right in. And let's see, so we're set up. The first thing we're gonna do before we get into the lighting is we're gonna first eliminate all the light in the space. We do this every time I do uh, a flash demo. Kind of the power of flash is, you, is it gives you control. So we're gonna set our camera first and then we'll set our flash to match our camera settings. So our camera is gonna be set at 250th of a second shutter speed, 100 ISO. That's the highest shutter speed that it will sync with the flash and the lowest ISO between its, uh, within the normal range. Then we're going to set our f-stop at an appropriate place to get the room dark. What that is depends on where you are, right? So that number is not fixed. I could have set the camera before I left my studio this morning at 250 at 100 ISO. No matter where I go, that's going to be the same. What's going to change is my f-stop. Usually in here, we're around 5 uh, because we do it all the time. That's how I know. But if you don't know, you can use the meter in your camera. I know your camera has a light meter in it. It's pretty exciting. Uh, dial it all the way down until underexposed and take a picture. What you're aiming for is a black frame. So we are tethered into Capture One right now with no flash. We should get a black frame. Uh, Dave's at 5.6, 100 ISO, 250. Our white balance is set on flash. Oh, perfect. Black on black, we call that one. So this is good, right? Brent looks good there. Um, you can see we have a black frame. I'm going to grab my exposure slider. I'm in Capture One. I'm going to slide it over till I can see him. There he is, right? 
Now I'm going to look to see how underexposed I am. That's this right here. I'm 2.23 stops underexposed. That's pretty good. What that means is that, eh, still a two there. What that means is that um, if in post production, I want to, let's say, recover shadows or something, I have about two stops or so that I can recover before I start to see the ambient light, right? This is important because the ambient light might not be coming from the direction that you want, or it might not be the color that you want. So if I want to do shadow recovery, I can still do it. You're asking if that umbrella comes convertible with a black cover. Does this come convertible with a black cover? I'm going to say yes. They do have them. Yeah. This one isn't, but you, um, you can get them that way. Sure, why not? I don't know that, but if sure, not, we'll make them. Why not? I mean, there's a lot. You see all the umbrellas they gave me? We'll figure it out. No, I, I didn't get one like that, so maybe not. But I'll say yes, because I say stuff. All right. If not, then you know, if there's a, if there's a, a need for them, then they'll, they'll make them. OK, we're going to use TTL. We're going to use TTL. So TTL means through the lens, right? It's a metering system. Um, TTL does not mean that you need to set your camera on any kind of uh, automatic setting. Your, your camera is still in manual. We're always going to be set the same way. The flash, though, will give us an automatic exposure. What it's going to do is it sends what's called a pre-flash, which you're not going to see. It comes before the flash, thus pre-flash. And it's going to measure the light needed, and it's going to give us what it thinks is the right exposure. We should, in theory, get a proper exposure, assuming that the light is powerful enough and the metering system you know, does its job well. A lot of times with TTL, it doesn't nail it on the first shot. Sometimes you have to adjust a little bit because the meter is going to give you what it thinks is the right exposure, not what you think is the right exposure, right? So we take a shot, we look at it. Right now, the, the light's just next to him. It's a large light source. It's going to come around and light him up. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. That's not me. There we go, right? Actually did a pretty decent job. The umbrella is obviously on this side of him. So, wow, you have nice eyes. Yeah, right, right? Soft light, right? You can see the, the, the shadow area here. The background's lit up. I think we're done, actually. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, is, it is kind of next to him because it's so large. Um, so it doesn't really have too much direction. So our shadows are all going this way. If we wanted more drama, we could raise it up. We could, you know, we could lower it. You change it around a little bit. This is just very, very simple. Uh, it's big, soft light. What is this good for? Portraits, for sure, right? Because soft light is almost always uh, what you want for portraiture. That's going to help minimize any wrinkles or any imperfections in the skin. It's going to make a, a nice, smooth light across the skin. Um, it could be used for full-length stuff. Let's do a full-length shot. We're, we're doing it. I told you we're going to do it. I don't, I don't know how Dave's going to do it. He'll figure it out. All right, so that's why we brought a wide-angle lens today. This light is big, right? And one thing that you want to think about when you're, when you're shooting a full-length shot is that you want your light source to be as large as possible because you always want, assuming you want soft light, which you do in a portrait, you always want your light to be as close as possible to your subject. That's key. As close as possible might be 10 feet, but you want it as close as you possibly can put it, depending on what you're shooting. But when you back your light up, it becomes smaller, right, relative to your subject, which means that it becomes harder, so it's not going to be as nice. So bigger light source for full length so that we can back it up. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a perfect example. Let's say that you're shooting children. They might not stay still, right? you got to give them a, like a turkey sandwich. That helps slow them down a little bit. But let's say you can't have a turkey sandwich. Maybe they don't go vegetarians, whatever. Um, yeah, what you would do is you would back your light up, right? And then you would just use a bigger light source. Right? Easy as that. Uh, what camera are you using? We're using the Canon uh, EOS 1DX Mark II. Uh, somebody asked what the camera we're using. Unless I was just messing with me because somebody said the name is wrong. Uh, Listen, they, they make up these camera names. This is not Lightroom. This is Capture One that we are capturing into. OK, so we're going to shoot, I uh, guess, full length-ish. Right? And there he is. He's lit up. Now, obviously, we're in a very small space, so he's close to the background, blah, blah. Um, but we can see that we can light him head to toe evenly. He could come forward a bit. We can see that even down to his toes. He's lit up. You know, of course, 
you're going to want to roll the paper out if you're doing a whole series of full lengths. Unless you want to be edgy. You be edgy and leave the paper rolled like that. Yeah, we like to be edgy here. Yeah. Actually, I used to shoot a lot of stuff on paper, and I would always leave it rolled up like this because uh, I couldn't afford paper, so you don't ruin it this way. Uh, okay, so yeah, so this is pretty simple. Uh, you probably want to get the camera lower. Yeah. Maybe like waist high would be ideal. You don't want to be too low, right? If you're too low, then uh, the person's going to start looking distorted. Yeah. Waist high is usually best for a full length shot. So that's one thing to think about when you're shooting full length stuff, whether you're shooting in a studio or you're shooting on location. You know, most people hold the camera like this and they're shooting. If you're lower with the camera, um, you'll actually get uh, more of flattering proportions. And again, this is just the big old uh, shoot through umbrella lighting him up. Any questions about this so far? Simple, right? Yes. What's that? Where do you aim the umbrella? Okay, where do you aim the umbrella? That's actually a great question. At the subject? Okay, no, I'm, I'm kidding with you. Okay, so no, this is actually, where you aim it will actually affect your shot a lot, and you can actually really think about this. This is kind of key. You can actually probably see, maybe this is why you're asking, it's actually aimed past him a bit, right? Um, that's so that more light will get past him and hit the background. We're, we're, we have a large light source. We can do that. You can feather the light more forward. Depending on when your light source starts to get really large, it, it doesn't matter as much. I mean, it always matters, but it's less, less of an edge that you're going to see. But if you were to turn the light, you know, like this. That's fine. Right, so th this is now, I mean, again, this is so big, it's still gonna hit the background, but now there's much more light in front of him. The reason why I might do this is because it's probably gonna throw more light onto the side of his face, um, it, which is gonna give us a little bit more direction, see that? Now, why is that like a little bit more defined shadow? Because we're using this like edge of this light. It's not exactly coming around like it was before. So we'll do that, and then look, if we do this, Right? Shoot through umbrellas come in different shapes. If so, what's the value of the shapes? Right? Changes up a little bit. See, the background is a little different. We can see the light on him is a little different. So, you want to kind of move your light around to get the effect that you want. You see the shadow pattern is slightly different. You see his skin tone looks different. See how it's brighter in that one, right? A little different. So, it depends. So, if you're going to, um, as just a baseline, I usually kind of point it more or less at them. Uh, to start, and then I'll adjust as we go with an umbrella, because umbrellas are so big, uh, they throw the light out so wide, rather, I should say, um, that it doesn't change as much as, let's say, a softbox. Like, that would have been a huge dramatic difference in a softbox. So the question was, do they come in different shapes? Yeah, like a parabolic deep. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's different types of umbrellas. There's deep umbrellas, which tend to, uh, which this one is, actually. Uh, if you're bouncing into them, they tend to have a bit of a more narrow throw. They also, even with this, they have, you can see that the light, it's, it's less wide this way. So it's narrowing it up. So it actually does have a different shape to it. Um, I like deep ones because they tend to, to be a little bit more directional, even though umbrellas aren't that directional to start off with. But um, they give you a little bit more direction and punch. So yeah, you can de definitely get different shapes. I don't think we have any of the flat uh, or not deep ones for this today, so. Okay, that's big, soft, easy, right? That's the base, baseline for, for a single light umbrella shot. You could, I'm gonna pull this out, so hopefully it doesn't hit. We could go, let's go exactly the opposite way. Let's go with the, the small bead one. So there's a, there's, a, there's a 41, right? 41 beaded silver. This should give us, I think, the most directional light. So this one, brand new. I know, right, brand new. We don't mess around here. So this one is 41 inches, which is still relatively big, uh, but not nearly as big as the other guy. Sure, we can gel it. We can use a gel on it. Uh, we'll get masked. We'll, I'll do it in a minute. This one is beaded, so it's going to give a little bit of punchy light. It's also not deep, I think. So there you go. Now this one's deep, too. It doesn't look that deep, but it says deep on it. So we trust it. So this one's beaded silver. What's kind of cool here is, as Dave pointed out, it actually has like a little description on each one of these, which I think is really nice, that tells you kind of what it does. Uh, let's see. And 
Beaded Silver Umbrella provides stronger focused light, along with soft shadow definition. Right? punch your light. So it's going to be a little more focused. It's going to be uh, down. You might use this when you want a little bit more contrast. Maybe you want it to, to feel like uh, the sun, but softer. Or for, for, uh, for some kind of beauty, it might be nice. Uh, the difference between spacing and the umbrella. Right. So where, where the umbrella sits uh, on the head, and I'll put the modeling light out from this. Hopefully you guys can see. All right. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not wasting light, right? So you generally want to place your umbrella not too far out, because if you do that, you, you start shooting past the edge of it, right? Light starts to come past the edge of the umbrella. This will give us our maximum shape. If we, if we go into it uh, closer, it's going to be a tighter throw, basically. And also, technically, a harder light, because you're not going to fill the whole umbrella. So it depends on your light head is where you want to put it. You can just turn the modeling light on and look, and just put your hand inside of it like I just did. Right, and you want to make sure that all your light stays inside your umbrella. There you go. Again, we're in TTL, so it will uh, give us the proper exposure, in theory. This is going to be more specular, so our highlights should be punchier. Our, our overall uh, shadows should be more defined. Yeah, that's actually kind of nice. A little punchy, right? We can see, especially on this side of his face, where we really see the shadows coming up. Right, you see the difference? Right? That's a little bit hot. So it's giving us a, a little bit of, of a brighter exposure, partially because it's silver, you know, and partially because it's just more directional. The TTL is just uh, giving us hotter exposure, although it's not technically overexposed, so we're actually fine. Um, but, you know, let's give it a little bit less light, maybe. I'll do one third. Yeah. So he's going to turn it down a smidge. And again, you're going to start where you, where you start. There we go. That looks nice, right? There he is. I kind of like this one. Put this one on my, in my shopping cart. <laughs> yeah, this has got a nice, nice definition to it. And again, it, we could put it, it's slightly further away. Uh, I don't know if we can get much closer with it. Tell me yeah. from in the shot, can we get closer? Uh, right there is on your image. Yeah. yeah. So one thing you gotta be uh, aware of when you're using a bouncing umbrella versus a shoot through is that this is your light source, right? So when I'm using this umbrella, the light source is now this far away from him. If I was shooting through this umbrella, the light source could be right here. This is the edge of my frame. So by its nature, it's always going to be smaller, and it's always going to spread out more, right? Because of the name. Is his dark shirt dominating the TTL reading? Um, I don't think so. Pretty much TTL is going to give you, uh, you know, what it gives you, basically. It's... it's it usually does a pretty good job. I've got it on spot. Yeah, he's got it on spot metering. Is, uh, you know. Is in the center, so it's probably the beard. It could be his beard that's doing it. I mean, this is not overexposed, it's actually. It's, it's technically it has detail. Um, and you do want to stay on a little bit on the hot side. Personally, I, I usually just go with it. But, it, but if you want to be safe, especially if it's going to be changing around, this is probably a better exposure for you. Um, but no, I don't think shirt's affecting it. If anything, it would be the background, because it's trying to light the background, and the light background's further away. So that'll often happen. If you're trying to light up a large scene with TTL and something's really close to you, that thing will be overexposed, because it's trying to light the scene up. Cool. That's silvered one. We could also, um, I guess I want to see the difference between this and the other silver, right? So we'll see the difference. There is also a flat silver. This one is black silver. I'm assuming they mean the back of it's black. But I guess we'll find out in a second. Mm -hmm. What if you don't want? What about speed lights? Uh, could you use speed lights for this? Absolutely. Um, what you probably want to do when you're using a speed light, especially with an umbrella, is put your little dome that comes with it on there so that you get as much spread out as possible. Because remember what I just said about the other one. If you're using a speed light and you let the head focus in, you might not use the whole umbrella. So you want to get the whole umbrella filled. These are pretty good, actually, uh, color-wise, too. So, you know, you can get a feel for it. And again, you can. Actually, we'll do both to show the difference. A lot of this stuff is subtle. So this is basically giving us our maximum coverage. I can actually see the edge here. Yeah. Oh, that was the test button, not the modeling light button. There you go. 
So again, it's going to uh, give us, uh, uh, we're in TTL, so it's going to give us an exposure again that it thinks is good. Oh, that's interesting. Background's got a little, a little, a little less even. Right? He, the whole overall light is a little bit less even on his face. Um, let's anyway. push it in closer. Right? So we're just filling part of it. That should change it up a little bit. We'll see the difference here. Yeah, interesting. Background's darker. He's a little bit hotter. In fact, now we can actually dial down the exposure a bit, too, to get it correct, and we'll see even more fall off on the background. Yeah, maybe a stop. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Yeah, there we go. Now, that's cool, right? And just to go back, yeah, exactly. Now let's rotate it off the background. I was going to do it from that one. Or the whole stamp. Oh, you can do that too, yeah. I don't think it'll. Usually you want to keep the weight over the long leg, but this umbrella's not heavy, so I'm not worried about it. Dave was doing it correctly. So now we have more directional control, right? We're going to be able to rip the umbrella past him and get less light on the background. Possibly as much as zero, but I'm not going to guarantee that. We don't guarantee anything here. Yeah, we guarantee it. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, though, now we're a little bit on the uh, dark side on his other side of his face. So, so we're, we're dark over here. Yeah, why not? So we can take this. Is that in the shot? That is in the shot, yeah. Hold on, let me, let me also. What's that? As a reflector. I mean, it's no pizza box, but. This is like Here we go, right? You have Seth's t-shirt right there. OK, I do have Seth's t-shirt. However. Put a hard line on the background. Weird. That is the. Cats lights are cool. Yeah, right? Okay, so Lori is here. You know, she's yeah. been to many demos and she's decided to tell me, well, I could just use Seth's t shirt. Why, why wouldn't I do that? I mean, besides the fact that he's busy. <laughs> What's the difference between Seth's t shirt and this? This is diffused and um, huge. It's bigger, exactly, right. So, bigger reflector is going to bounce softer, more light in. Right? So this is going to give me all kinds of bounce back. Right? So you could use small reflectors, depending on what you're trying to do. This is just giving a wash of light. So that's why I want a, a big reflector. You always want the biggest reflector that you can uh, swing. Should we do it again? Do we like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Okay. A little light is getting bounced under the background. Sure, why not? Oops, I think I broke the umbrella. There we go. Good thing about breaking the umbrellas is that they're cheap. All right. Plus, let's say he's shy, right? He has to change. Right, he's got to change. <laughs> Let's hold this all day. Yep. I'm chilling out. Yeah. You're shy. He's shy back there. Right, we're bouncing in. Hmm. Oh, interesting. The whole thing looks a little dark, though. You still until TTL? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's okay, huh? One thing about uh, TTL is that you can sometimes get, well, that's two different things, but you can sometimes get yeah. two completely different exposures, right? Because it will change. A little bit of flare. Wow, a little lens flare going on there. Um, it will change your exposure every single time it. Uh, Every single time you take a shot, right? That's basically how TTL works, which is the which is the advantage of it, right? If you have TTL, then I shoot a picture here, and then I go back here and shoot a picture with my flash. I'll always get a good exposure. Disadvantage is if my light's in one place and I'm shooting 50 shots in a row, you may get some difference in uh, brightness uh, between frames, which is why generally, if I'm going to set up in a, more of a setup shot, I'll switch off the TTL once I get rolling. A flare. A little lens flare there, getting a little, little edgy there with the flare. Yeah. All right, cool. So silvered umbrella, hard, punchy light coming from the side, you know, lots of lots of highlight uh, going on because it's specular, right? It's been lots of good specular highlights. If we were photographing somebody that had shiny, really shiny skin, makeup that was shiny, et cetera, et cetera, this would definitely not be ideal. You'd have to really control it because your silver umbrella is gonna 
uh, create a lot of specularity on the skin. Cool. All right, so. Oh, we'll do that now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. We're doing all kinds of stuff today. We are on a roll. All right, so one thing I was talking about earlier that I wanted to try, not that, that's not what I want to try, um, is I'm just going to keep spinning this all day. Let's see how long people will watch you do it. There we go. OK, so let's get that guy out of the way. I'm going to put this umbrella onto a stand, right? Why? Because I'm crazy. Everybody watching this video now see where I put this pin when it gets lost later? OK, so <laughs> those, things, those things are always disappearing. So I'm going to use my C-stand here, and I'm going to actually put the umbrella on the stand. Um, and instead of directly shooting through it, we're going to actually bounce into the silver umbrella first uh, to create kind of a different feel. It's always important to use as much equipment as possible because you can bill for it. All right, so this will actually slide in here, we think. There's a smaller one somewhere. Yeah, we'll use that one, I guess. We'll just pinch it. Yeah. It's fine. It's below. Hold on. There you go. There we go. Uh, okay. All right. I won't put too much pressure on there. All right, let's see how much pressure the, the umbrella can take before it breaks. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to set it up in our position where we want it, and then we're going to use our other light with the silvered umbrella to bounce through it. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're a little crazy, but also because it's gonna give us a little bit more specularity. And also it's going to be uh, a little bit more kind of overall and even, because when I'm blasting light through the front of it, it, you're getting that hot spot. So the light's hitting it and it's spreading out. This is gonna bounce back and then come through. So it's gonna, it's gonna be this odd mix that's gonna look really nice. It will not be too dark. Okay, so there it is. It's not too dark. Why? Magic. TTL, right? The TTL compensated for it, um, creating basically nice even light across the skin, but still has a little bit of punch to it. And I guess we could fill in the other side if we want to go crazy. I don't have another umbrella to use for that, so I have to use one of the, the actual reflector cards that we have here. We got bigger ones now. Oh, bigger ones. Um, yeah. This one has holes in it. Oh, perfect. For letting some light. It, it makes an X. OK, so. <laughs> I'm not sure why this hole's in it. They look like, oh, no, you know, I think we built a light with this at one point. Yeah, I think I built a light with this one. Those are from uh, sockets. There we go. All right, nice and even. Big, even, good light across his face. Really, really kind of flat and even. Very forgiving light for, for anybody. You know, versus light that's more punchy like that. Okay, so let's actually compare that to just the giant soft, the giant light by itself. I mean, granted, this one had a reflector in it. Actually, hold on, I can do the one without the reflector. I don't want to cheese. They're saying use Seth's $300 shirt. <laughs> I would use Seth's $300 shirt, but, uh, you know. Like I said, it's too small. All right. Um, just shoot through umbrella, bounced through shoot through umbrella, right? Nice. See the difference there? It's a little bit more kind of, would you say creamy? Would you use the creamy word? I think so. It it's a little more creamy. Looks fuller. fuller. There we go. All right. Cool, right? Fuller house? I think that didn't do that well, right? <laughs> that, was, that was the new show. I didn't watch the first show, so. All right, so what haven't we used yet? We're cranking through these things. Oh, let's do the double umbrella. So since we have, yeah. so one thing that I'm gonna do, which doesn't showcase any particular umbrella, I don't think, period, is just a technique that I like to use with umbrellas, um, which we sometimes do, is one cool thing about using umbrellas is that because of the shape of them, you can kind of put them around your camera to create a large light source that you're, you're kind of in the middle of, I'll say. Um, so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna create 
a large light source, right? If I was to take a, a large softbox, let's say, for instance, and I was to put it right here, it'd be in front of my lens and blocking it. But I can actually take two umbrellas, and you can see because of the shape of it, I'll be able to get the lens in between. This is also good if you're shy, you don't want to see the person, you know, um, you can do that. Obviously, we need two lights to do that, and we'll get the other umbrellas out. Nope, that's not the umbrella. We do have two umbrellas, right, that are the same? Okay. Oh, there they are. All right, so these are black, white, deep. This one that we already have out, right? Uh, no, that's silver. Oh, yeah, let's do one silver, one white. Whoa, oh. <laughs> Should we risk it? I mean, you know, it's not like... Let's, let's do both the same to start, because that's the, the, the normal technique, then we'll change it. All right, so this is, okay, so these are not, they might not make a convertible. I may have lied to that first person. Oh, well. Glow, make a convertible. Thank you. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> that's a nice umbrella. All right, so. Cool. Yeah, the 51, these are 51 white. I think so. I think 51 is the one that I have. Oh, okay. I don't know which one it is then. Oh, maybe not. I thought it was the two silvers that it was. Oh, it's the two silvers? Do we have another white one? Okay, we're looking for another umbrella. Sorry, any questions while we're looking? Yes. All right, I'll do one, sure. Seth has a suggestion. He wants to do an overhead shot. Why not? Because that's the kind of thing that I do for you, Seth. So you can do a singular umbrella, obviously. Um, and an overhead. This is always a good option as well. That'll work, why not? I'm just making sure the umbrella's not in my, uh, the stand's not in my shot, rather. That's in a little bit. Let me see, I'll zoom in. Nope. I will zoom with my feet. There we go. You got it? Thanks. Okay, so again, I'm in TTL. This is in... That's A, so I'm gonna turn that off. So this one's in group B. I'll turn off group A. And this is kind of more of a frontal shot. So nice and simple, right? Always, always good. Shapes the face. If we wanna get super fancy, we could throw in a reflector. I'm even gonna, because I'm doing it, I'm gonna do it Seth's style if I can. Uh, this is, by the way, if you come see Seth do a demo, this is how he does it. No, you're not allowed to touch it. No, 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 I have to, I have to hold it just like Seth does. <laughs> and there we go. All right. <laughs> he doesn't let anybody touch his reflectors. He's very, very, these cost $300. Ma ma made in Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Fill in, nice and simple. Right, easy. Okay. Well, the deep lets you shake the face nice. Yeah, it is. The deep is really nice. I mean, you definitely get a little bit more control as far as the, the beam with it. Did we end up having two that are the same or no? We do, but they're not that much silver. Oh, okay. We'll do silver then. It's like when you order pizza and they send it. Oh, see, I was trying to get the, the side shot. Oh, there he's thinking about it. Yeah, go ahead and look to the side because I want to show how even the slide is. Right? So even like a, a nice side shot, you know, shooting kind of central is really easy. And it's kind of interesting because it's almost like having a gigantic flash on top of your camera, yeah, right? Is there a possible to do it completely overhead? Why not? This one's useful, especially if it's raining. Oh, wait, here's the other 51B. Oh, did I put it on the ground? Okay. They just got out of order. Out of order. Out of order. You're out of order. All right. Cool. Like that, maybe? Sure, Why not? This time you'll probably have to hold it. Well, actually, don't hold it yet, because we have to show comparison. 
All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get a little closer. He's looking mean. There we go. So he knows. See, Brett knows that when the light's overhead, that you should have like a more of an intense uh, feel. And now get the light, now get the little reflector going. We'll commercial it up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Even with the looking commercials, you can no, you should still be hardcore with the with the with the look. Yeah, that, that's it. Good. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so that's more like an overhead shot if you like that kind of shot. It can be nice too. It doesn't work on everybody though. That that far overhead can be tough. Yeah. Friends, what we call a ringer. <laughs> All right, so let's do. Let's go back to the original thing. So. Ask for the shot. <laughs> that's right. There you go. <laughs> All right. So back to my original thing. That was, that was like a little side commercial. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. Just watch the projector. Watch the what? Oh, the projector. Yeah. I never look up when I set up my umbrellas, so <laughs> if I break something. All right, so we're going to create a really large light source. Now you can do, I've actually seen this uh, done um, with four umbrellas if you're doing full length. So you can set a wall of light. Looks impressive. Helps if it's raining from the side. Gothic. What? It's very gothic looking. Very gothic looking? Yeah. Oh, he is? When you see the whole setup oh. of those black umbrellas this deep, it gets very uh, Burton-y. Oh, OK. You want to do like a big one? Yeah, like one big source. That's pretty good. You know, essentially, we're creating this gigantic source that we're going to put the camera in the middle of. Yeah, more or less flat. I think that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, kind of. You can overlap them a tiny bit if need be. Yeah, and you want to get right in the middle. And where these umbrellas fall will help you control the contrast. So we can bring them really low, you know, as low as we can without being in front of them. Size. Yes. Size. These are 51 inch white umbrellas. Nice, nice and even in the front. Except for the A heads off. There we go. I was like, why is there a shadow on that side of his face? And that's why. It was to show you guys the difference. So that's just one umbrella, which is still pretty nice, right? You have some contrast. And then you got the two umbrellas, makes it nice and flat and even on his face. They said, please stop saying cheap, say good value. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say good value. <laughs> All right. So. I use good value when things are expensive because that's a really a good value, usually. All right, so uh, this is a good scenario. Let's say that you've got a lot of people to photograph. Some people you want a little bit of a, a more shadow look. They're younger, more athletic, whatever. The, you've got some other people in front of you that you want a flatter light. You know, you've got that as well, okay? And we can change this slightly by Changing the angle of the umbrellas, we could tip tip them up more. Let's go pretty like extreme. Like, why not? Let's go like up like that, right? We can tip them up to add more contrast, and we can tip them flatter to have less contrast. Right? Now I've got a little more contrast, like around his face. You can see the difference between that and that. Right? Make them smaller so you guys can see it better. Right, you see the contrast under his nose, the shadows and stuff. And of course you can go, I mean, we can go really far. We can go almost always up. These are pretty big, so they're gonna, yeah, that's almost, yeah, let's go almost completely flat, why not? Why not? That's about as flat as they go, yeah? Yeah. Huh. And now we've just got like a lot of light from above. There we go. You wanna go straight up and down? Yeah, let's go straight up and down if we can. We can do that with the C10 head. Right? We'll keep them, in, unlike the other uh, overhead shot that I did, we'll keep the umbrella slightly in front of him now. And now it's going to really create a kind of an oddball. This is like the cool guy that doesn't want to stand on the umbrella. Like everybody else has their umbrella, but this guy's he's like, I don't need an umbrella, it's not raining that hard. Right? Uh, you know, now we have, again, more contrast. And actually, we have a faded uh, background. So you don't have to you know, buy those extra faded paper. We can just make it. And of course, we can bounce light back in if we want. Right. Yeah, he smiles with that one. That's the commercial look, you know. And now we got the gradation on the background. You know, simple as that. Really easy. Lots of stuff you can do. You want to do them on the side? 
Yeah, let's do it on the side for we'll finish up that way. I think we're doing pretty good. Any questions so far about umbrellas? We're just doing stuff, yeah. How much of the umbrella are you actually using? Your flash unit has a recess flash tube and you have Yeah, I know what you're saying. All of it, because I turned my modeling light on and I saw that okay. Yep. Okay, good. Because you, you, were, you were restating the fallacy of the recessed flat tube, flash tube. Profoto heads, oh, well, I'm about to do a Profoto ad, here it comes. Yeah. Cliff, this is for you. These have 120 degree spread. Even though they look flat, the only time that it really affects you is things like beauty dishes, where the light really has to come out of the side. It has 120 degree spread, it's not gonna affect an umbrella. It's barely gonna affect a softbox. We're gonna go side to side. Yeah, we're gonna do it like that. Now you feel like you're this is actually how they came up with the idea for Princess Leia's haircut in the first uh, movie. Look the Princess Leia with the, you know? Yes, I'm with you. <laughs> Trying. She's like, I'm with you, she's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing inside. <laughs> look, they can't, they can't all be funny. You have, to, you, have to, you have to offset it. There we go. Did I get it? That's pretty cool, why not? Oh yeah, I like that. That's a good overhead shot. What's funny is that camera was there for like three years. We know we never used it. Oh, there we go. That's kind of cool. All right, so now we've got this like heavily side lit kind of edgy look. There we go. Yeah, We're gonna bounce a little reflector. I think that'll work, right? Yeah, just gotta bring it up a bit. Why not? Now we filled in a tiny bit. Get a little more light in his eyes. He's looking hardcore. There you go. Easy as that, right? Umbrella's on the side. Background's not completely even. You know, we could mess with that if we really wanted to. Actually, let's switch, let's. Forward a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, let's get it darker back there. I think forward and even like this, maybe. Ah, okay. What about that? Because we're gonna bounce light in anyways. Yeah. All right, cool. Now we're going almost like a, like a rip back. That's a technical term, rip back. Look it up on Wikipedia. Questions? No. Oh, all right. We're cranking. So either I'm just going way too fast and nobody's following any of this, or ah, perfect. Now, I'm going to actually almost uh, flat. This is almost flat. I'm keeping it kind of flat. Wow. I'm not getting much, huh? I guess I could do it like yeah, that. Like then. There we go. Nice. Now this is more, more, more extreme, right? Depends on the look you're going for, right? It's all about angle of the umbrella, right? Where you want to put it. So where do you put the light? Sir, that asked me that question earlier. Where do I aim the light? Didn't you ask me that earlier? Yeah. <laughs> right. It depends on the look you're going for, right? I did this all for you, by the way. This was a buildup from your question. This entire <laughs> Right, where you put it is gonna really affect how the light looks, right? An umbrella is just an umbrella, but then you can do so many different things with it if you actually think about where you want it to fall and where you want your shadows to fall. That's kind of what we're doing here. I think we went through every style of umbrella ever made in not that long. Whoa, somebody wanted it to be gelled. Let's make one colorful. And let's go back to silver. Oh, I was gonna say, um, oh, oh, Dave has an idea. What if we do silver, silver backlight? What? Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, and then a, a gelled silver backlight? Let's start without the gel. Okay, so you do a silver backlight. I'll set up the, fr the front light. Let's see. What, what should we do for the front? Maybe the translucent? Yeah. I think I have a smaller translucent one. All right, we're going to use a small translucent umbrella in the front. I think. <laughs> nope, that's black-white. I'm going to use the smallest translucent that they gave me. Translucent, 41. And we're gonna use this as our front light, giving us a, a nice kind of diffuse light for the, for the key, but also uh, keeping it relatively small so we can have a little bit of control over where it falls. So I'm gonna lose this one. By the way, with all these, um, with all these umbrellas here, 
This is exactly what Adorama looks like whenever it rains in New York, because everybody buys those umbrellas on the street and walks in with them. Where are those street umbrella guys when it's not raining? That's what I want to know. You know what I'm talking about? They appear out of nowhere. Oh, sunglasses. <laughs> I, look, I don't even understand where they get the umbrellas from. It's like they're not even there, and all of a sudden, boom. It's weird. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is funny. They probably are selling these sunglasses. All right, maybe get them closer. Or should I get closer? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to do something, you know, a little bit more of a... Like, uh, we will, we will eventually gel this because uh, somebody asked me to. And I, I do whatever people ask for the most part. Oh, yeah. You know what we'll do, too? Should I do this or are you going to get mad? Oh. Oh, wow. All right. There you go. He's looking there. He's, he's a, <laughs> All right, so translucent, nice and, nice, nice and creamy. <laughs> Diffuse light across his face, soft. Some of the lights hit in the background, which is why it's lit. Then we've got this silver adding contrast, making his hair, hair pop, give him three dimensionality. But I think it'd be nicer if it was like a like a, a color. So let's put a gel on it. On the cover? Yeah, why not? You ready to go warm? Yeah, I was thinking, uh, yeah, let's let's go warm because if I do a blue backlight, that will kill me. That that's like his trademark. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is a CTO. I'm gonna double it up. So there's a few ways that you can do this depending on your light. You could either just put it over the light like with the Profoto because I'm, I don't have a really hot modeling light and uh, I don't even have it turned on. So I can literally just put it here, right? That'll be fine. If you have a modeling light that will melt the gel, what you wanna do is poke a hole in the center of the gel. Oh, thank you. You're gonna poke a hole in the center of the gel and you slide it up the shaft so it's here, right? So you bounce into it, right? We're not gonna do that because it'll charge me $7 for the gel if I do, so I'm gonna go like this. You should see how my Christmas presents look. All right, there we go. <laughs> Nobody breathe. All right, we're in TTL, I think. Yep. Yep, so it should compensate for it. I always say I think because Dave changes stuff when I'm not paying attention. Oh, yeah, there we go. Looks way more Irish now. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> hold on, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm doing it. I'm doing it just because I can. We're going to switch the white balance to tungsten. All right, kids. Ready? It's my son's impersonation. All right, good. Boom. Okay, what happened there? Oh, except the fact it's overexposed. All right. Lori. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the first shot, it's just regular, right? Neutral colored light, we have our white balance set on, on flash. This is bouncing off silver, this is going through a translucent, it's giving us a nice even light. Here, we wanted a warm light on his hair, so I put a warm gel on this light, right? That makes sense, right? This light's warm. But what I did here was I moved it to my key light, and then I white balanced against it. Now we're in tungsten white balance, which means that our flash is technically blue, relatively speaking. So with one gel, I just saved you seven dollars. You can use that money to yes. So the question is, would you, wouldn't you put a reflector onto the light before you gel it? Would I put a reflector onto the light before I gel it? Not for these lights. It would depend on your system. The reason why you'd put a reflector on would be if you had a modeling light that would melt the gel. This uses an LED. Plus, we're not really using it, so I don't bother. Um, but if you had, a, let's say, a D2 or uh, or D1s even or like an acute system like I have, you would want to put a reflector on there for sure, yeah. Yeah, actually technically if you have these, they make a, a gel holder that you just slip on there and it's really nice, easy. 
just don't put tape. Usually that's a bad idea. Taping gels onto your lights will generally the tape will end up melting and stick to your, your light. Okay, questions. Uh-oh. What do I mean by white balance? Oh boy. Okay, I don't even know what I mean by that. Okay, so basically, we, I will explain this really quickly. So your camera, right, is capable of, of matching, wherever you go in the world, you're inside of a building, you're outside, you're under fluorescent lights, whatever, your camera can change its white balance to make that neutral. So we just did that manually. I changed the color of this light, and then I used it, I used a white balance against it. Yeah, I just, I matched it. Yeah, I explained that pretty quickly, right? Okay, good, that, that was That's a tough one. That's correct. It's also a little bit overexposed. Let's make it better by just turning it down a bit. Yeah. It's a smidge overexposed. We're going to give it a little bit less power. You see we're getting a little bit of hotness there. I probably need to put down one stop. Yeah, like maybe a stop. Make it more subtle. Sometimes a backlight is nice when it's subtle. Other questions? No. Okay, easy. They're asking if there was TTL in analog days. Was there TTL in analog days? Yes. ITTL. Yeah. So TTL has existed for a long time. There was also automatic, which was basically, and still exists in some flashes, uh, which uh, basically reads from the flash. It's pretty good. I don't mind being a little overexposed. Um, that's like a night shot, right? So now it's like moody. Cool. You know, well, yeah. Seated club. Yeah, you know, he's, he's there. He's, he's, he's got his martini. All right, cool. Other questions? We'll go back to, we're gonna go back to date. Oh, by the way, just before you do it, go ahead and shoot it in, in now without the gel. Just because. Oh, it's blue. See, that's because the gel was making it orange. That's how, that's how he is inside, frozen heart. Okay, questions? Yes. Is qualitative different shooting through the umbrella or just turning the umbrella around and having it reflect off the umbrella onto the subject? Sure, so the difference between uh, shooting through the umbrella and bouncing the umbrella is two. Shooting through the umbrella is going to make your light more diffuse. Diffusion handles your highlights, so it's going to lower the contrast in your highlights. Number two, it's also going to be a little bit less of a spread of light, generally. And number three, it's usually going to be softer, not because you're shooting through the umbrella, but because generally you can put it closer, right? This umbrella, shooting through it, can get really close. If, I, if this is as close as the light can be, because the, that's the edge of my frame. If I were to spin the light around, the umbrella would be like two feet further away, which makes it smaller. So generally you can get it closer, which means it's bigger, right? So that would be the main differences. Other questions? No? Wow, okay. They're silent. Yes, oh no, he has one more. I'm a cinematographer. Oh, good. And I shoot a lot of visuals. And I'm always looking mm -hmm. at acting through chimeras and mm -hmm. you know, diva lights and so forth. Uh, I'm looking for a way to create a much larger, softer source. And so what I would probably do with something like that is yeah. put up a large diffusion screen on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one way to go. Right? Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. You, you, could, you, could, you, yeah, you could certainly use these uh, for interviews, uh, you know, umbrellas for interviews. Yeah. If you wanted to uh, have spread and make it soft, er, because you're going to make it bigger or more diffuse, you could put diffusion in front of it. Right. In fact, not for uh, cinematographers, but for photographers, they make, uh, sorry, Glow, but, uh, oh, actually, I think they make it for this. They, they make some, they probably got inspired by, we'll call it that, uh, the soft lighter. Basically, they make a diffuser that goes in the front. I don't think it would handle the heat, though, so you wouldn't yeah, want to use it. Yeah, but you, you definitely, and in fact, that's kind of what we did, right? We, we did that with the big umbrella shooting through, right? Did you miss that? Was that before you came? I think so. Well, you'll have to watch it now on YouTube. All right, so, questions besides that? <laughs> No. Okay. Cool, guys. Uh, next week we're doing. Oh, next week we're doing. Is next week's the eighth, right? No, fifteenth. <laughs> it's not up yet. Next week I'm doing basic photography lighting. Oh, interesting. So if you have, yes, it's actually called 101. If you have the most basic questions, bring them next week because I will answer them, uh, hopefully in a way that will be understandable. The week after that, Bron Color is coming, and we're going to do beauty photography with Bron Color Hasselblad. That'll be awesome. Um, Probably won't have Brent though, no. But that's okay. Um, yeah, we could bring you back just to, just to watch. He can, yeah, he can hang out. Um, we are going to stream again at three on Facebook. So if you guys want to watch again, if you're at home or if you're here and you want to watch online, uh, at Arms Facebook, we will stream. Uh, let's see, what else do we have going on? 
at 4.30, we're going to do that today? What are you going to do? Uh, at overtime, at 4.30 on my Facebook, we, we stream and basically Seth tells me everything I did wrong. So if you want to hear what he's actually saying over here behind the thing, account, be tuned into my Facebook, which is Daniel Martin Photographer at 4.30. Um, what else are we going on? That's it, right? Ah, if you're local to New York, Seth's doing a, a demo with speed lights on the 19th, small flashes. It's usually very popular, um, hard to get tickets. You know, you got to like wait online. It's, it's getting that way. Um, and what else? Oh, and Mondays, every Monday, I keep forgetting this. Every Monday on our Instagram, Seth goes live and does wild stuff. Oh, and we'll be at WPPI. And we're going to be WPPI. There'll be at WPPI, 333. That's a while off, though. Nobody here cares about that. Okay. Online, they care. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Yay, umbrellas. Oh, well, thank you.